Hello everyone, welcome to my little guide on applied energistics. Now this is going to be a like, complete beginner's guide. So what we're going to do is how to set up a like relatively small little setup where you can just store all of your items, you can import, you can export, you can use storage buses to like, actually use storage that you've already got set up. Super useful stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over how to set up a uh, automated like mining of the Certus Quartz as well. Certus Quartz is the lifeblood of this mod. It's like the thing that you need a lot of for this mod. So super easy setup. I, I'm displaying it right here. Uh, I will also go over the inscribers and just generally how to start with Applied Energistics. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to find one of these meteors. This one's actually annoying because it's got lava around it, but there you go, source of lava as well. So you want to come here with an iron pickaxe or higher. So right here we've got skystone. You need some skystone to actually start. You need at least four of this. So make sure you pick up some skystone as you're mining into this. I've already hollowed this out, so this would normally be completely covered up. But right in the center of one of these meteors, we have got this mysterious cube. And within this mysterious cube, you've got one of each of the inscriber presses. Now this is different to previous versions of Applied Energistics. Previously, you'd have to go around each, like you'd have to go to a couple of these, uh, these meteors to find a chest in the middle, and then that had some stuff, but now it's all in this mysterious cube. So if I quickly set myself to that game mode. I am using Silk Touch. <laughs> Didn't realize you could Silk Touch that. That's brilliant. Right, there you go. Regular pickaxe. If you mine this, you get all four of the presses. Now, you need these presses specifically to make the processors, which are used in, like, pretty much everything to do with uh, Applied Energistics. Uh, and what you'll find here as well is you'll have Certus Quartz. This is what we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, the lifeblood of the mod. So Certus Quartz has changed since like 1.18 and now it comes in sort of the Amethyst sort of variant if you know what I mean. So we've got like these budding crystals that, that like sprout out from them. There is ways to like accelerate this from growing these crystals so it's very useful the way that we we can do that. I will show you that in a bit. I've actually got one set up you might have seen already but yeah, it's, it's important to mention that you cannot pick up the flawless ones. So right here, this is flawless. If I were to use, this is this is a sin right now, using this uh, Silk Touch pickaxe on here, because flawless, when you mine it, becomes flawed. So I've, hopefully I've got another, there's another flawless right there. So flawless, what flawless does is it never degrades. It will always produce these Certus Quartz Buds. And when these Certus Quartz Buds like grow all the way up and you mine them, so if I mine this one for example, the small one, you only get the Certus Quartz Dust. Now, if there's like a fully grown version, oh yeah, they can also grow on every single side, right? So if there's a fully grown version, this one's large, that one's large. There you go, I just uh, cheated one in. But if you were to mine this, you do get the actual Certus Quartz Crystals. It's quite quite good to know. So you can move these. There's a way of doing that using like the spatial stuff in uh, Applied Energistics, but I'm not going to go over that in this video. I might do a separate video on that, along with things like P2P and all the other things. This is supposed to be like a complete basics guide. So it's important to say that you can actually make all of these right here, all of these uh, different types of crystals, except for the flawless. So if we have a look at the flawed version, and I go to recipes, if you put the uh, chipped version, in fact, I'll have to go all the way through to get to, there you go. So to make the damaged version, which is like the worst version, you have to throw a Certus Quartz block, a charged Certus Quartz, which we'll go over in a sec, into some water or any type of fluid by the looks of it. Like normally you'd be using water in this case, 
you throw it into some water, the charged Certus Quartz will charge up the damaged budding. So the, the Certus Quartz block into a damaged budding. You can then throw another piece of charged Certus Quartz in to get the chipped version. So it goes from damaged to chipped. And then you can do that one more time. Or is it two more? I think it's one more. To get the flawed version of the uh, budding Certus Quartz. And then this one has like a chance to yeah break down again into the other two versions so it goes flawed then chipped there's a chipped and then to damaged and i think they yeah with each growth they have a chance to turn into the previous like the the down version of it so every time this does a grow i think it's, there's like an eight percent chance that the flawed version will turn into a chipped version and then every time this grows, there's an 8% chance for the, it to turn into damage version. And then there's an 8% chance that the damage version will turn back into a Certus Quartz block. So there is ways of uh, getting around that. Like Obviously, you can have like a block breaker or something that will break it. Chuck it in some water with some Certus Quartz or charged Certus Quartz. And then pick it back up and then place it back down. That's one way to do it. I think that's what I did in my All the Mods 9 Let's Play. Uh, but the best thing to do is to get yourself one of these flawless, get it back to your base, and then you just don't have to think about it. So the way that you get charged Certus Quartz, which does become quite useful later, is uh, you use one of these things called the Charger. And the Charger's got a very simple recipe. It's just a bit of copper, some iron. You get yourself a Charger. And at first you might be thinking, well, how the heck do I get energy into the search quartz, why well, you just slot it in place like that. And then uh, you can either connect it up to some sort of energy system. So if I were to take like, this is a, a creative cube right here. You can see right now that has already created some charged search quartz. The power from the cube has gone into this. So if I were, I'm just gonna get rid of that for now. You probably won't have a creative energy cube at the beginning of your let's play, so what we're going to use instead is this wooden crank. So the wooden crank, again, relatively easy to make. Just some sticks, bit of copper, slap it on top, and then you can use charge certs or certs quartz like that. This has already got some charge in it, which is why it's already charged that one up. But if I put another one in there, we can right click. I think it's 10 times overall and it will turn into, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's put that back in. This has still got the charge, so it's fine. When this gets up to 100% charge, it should, there you go, it will convert the certus quartz into charged certus quartz. Now you can also use this, uh, if I do that, with some redstone and some nether quartz and you get yourself some fluix crystals. And fluids crystals are used later on for like cables and things like that. Uh, you can also use the charged ones to turn some of the Certus Quartz dust you might have accidentally like mined over time back into Certus Quartz. So you use one charged Certus Quartz and a Certus Quartz dust. Submerge it in water again and then you get yourself your charged one back but it's uncharged so it's a regular one and you've converted your dust into a crystal as well. Now there's a few other things like uh, I've got the Mega Cells mod installed and there's a few other mods. I'm currently in the ATM9 mod pack, but there's a few other bits that you can do. Uh, so for example, there's Fluix dust, which you can use to convert a charged Certus Quartz crystal into a Fluix crystal. As I said, uh, that's, Relatively easy. You just stick something in, put some power in it, and I'll tell you what, I'll stick this one back over here. And that will charge all of your Certus Quartz up into the charged Certus Quartz. Now, next up, you're going to want to make yourself some Inscribers. So, Inscribers, relatively easy to make as well. You do need some slime balls to make these sticky pistons, so keep an eye out for slimes. And what these do is if you were to put in, for example, this Certus Quartz like this, and you use the, the hand crank, just like that, that is going to 
smoosh that up and give you some Certus Quartz Dust, because there are a few recipes that need Certus Quartz Dust, like this Quartz Fibre. And this Quartz Fibre is used to make some ME cable. So this is the cable that everything lies on. Like, I've got a load of it already around the place. Now again, you don't need to use the wooden crank for this. You can use uh, an energy cell. In fact, you don't even need an energy acceptor like I have uh, set up right here. So if we get rid of that and we just stick energy cells on all of these, get rid of the, the wooden crank right there, uh, we can put in, for example, let's get some more Certus Quartz. Let's grab a bunch of it, why not? And you can just stick one of those in. Now, again, there's been a slight change since applied energistics in other versions. 1.20.1 has a different thing, which is you can actually put multiple things in here now. You couldn't do that like in previous versions. You only could put one of each thing in. So if you are playing on like a 1.19.2 mod pack or even earlier than that, bear that in mind that it has to go in one at a time. It won't let you put more than one item in uh, these things. Also, you'll notice that there's this can insert from any side. In previous versions, you would have to, if you were going to use like, for example, we've got presses, which I will go over in a sec. You would have to put things in in specific sides. Again, no longer needed in 1.20.1. .1. So the presses that we found earlier, you can see that I've made five of these inscribers right here. So the five that I've got are basically all four of the presses that we got. I'm actually going to turn this off because it's annoying me. There we go. Uh, yeah, you've got all four of the presses that we got from the Meteor earlier. And we've got an extra one. And the reason I set it up like this is because you can do some automations with this. So I will go over that maybe at the end of the episode. So the first one you've got right here is uh, the silicon press. All you need to do for this is to get some silicon. Stick that in. This has got power. Obviously, you need to feed it power, as I said. The press actually presses into the silicon and gives you a printed silicon. Now you need this for basically all the other recipes, right? So this one is actually quite important, the uh, silicon press, in my opinion. This one I always like put at the beginning of my line, if you know what I mean. And I always put the empty one at the end. So what we'll do is we'll stick that in like that at the top. And then the next one we've got is calculation. So the calculation press can only take search quartz. And that will make the calculation, well, it will say it in a sec, calculation circuits, printed calculation circuit. Now, with the printed silicon and the calculation circuit in another inscriber, one goes in the top, one goes in the bottom, and some redstone. So I'm just going to grab a bit of redstone, put it there. You can create yourself a calculation processor. There it is. Now, you don't need many of the... the calculation ones I don't believe but you do need quite a lot of the logic press so that one requires gold so if you put a gold ingot in it will give you a logic circuit printed logic circuit there it is you actually use these to make discs or drives as they're known and uh, what they do is they hold items for you that's the whole point in the mod right if you think about it well that and crafting but we'll get to that later so again, what you need to do is you need another silicon, so printed silicon, just like this. I set it up so you can do that. So printed silicon, redstone, and the printed logic circuit gets you the logic processor. This one, as I said, is used for making the 1K ME storage component, which is used to make the 1K ME item storage cell. And you can use these in, well, I'll show you over here, in the ME drive. So you slot them in. I actually made the highest tier right here. Or I cheated them in, I must admit, but still. So the last one in the list is the engineering processor. So you actually need an engineering processor before you do anything else. Because you need a engineering processor 
to make the ME controller. So that's what this thing is right here, this colorful item that we've got. So the ME controller requires an engineering processor. It also requires some skystone blocks and that is by smelting skystone. So that's why earlier I did say, remember to pick up some skystone from the meteor. Don't just lob it away or whatever. And there we go. So once you've got your first, uh, I need to be in this mode, there we go. Once you've got your first engineering processor, you can make yourself an ME controller. Uh, you are also going to want to make some way of looking into your storage, right? And for that, I suggest going for the ME crafting terminal, not just the ME terminal. They, they are slightly different. In fact, I can show you the difference. Yeah. So if I put these three in like that, there we go. So the terminal will just be like a big chest, basically. You'll have a massive chest that you can just put in items and pull out items. The crafting terminal is awesome because you can right click it and it has all this stuff in here, but it also has a crafting table inbuilt. Now that doesn't sound like the most amazing thing ever, but it is because if I were to example, put some oak logs in here, for example, yeah. If we were to go over to the oak planks right here and we click on that and we go to recipes. So this recipe here is uh, just a regular oak log right there, turns into oak planks. We can just move items and it moves it from your from your discs or whatever storage you've got set up. And you can just grab the items out like that. It's super nice, super, super nice. Now to make this, you are going to need to go, I believe, to the nether because a lot of these things, so for example, I think it's the illumination pane, old panel, there you go, illuminated panel. This one requires glowstone for one thing, and you also need some of this quartz glass, which is where the certus quartz dust comes in. I do have Greg Tech installed right now, so that's why it's showing up with some Greg Tech recipes, but just regular AE2 certus quartz dust should work for this recipe. That's a bit of glass, some certus quartz dust in this recipe, you get four out of it. So that will get you three illuminated panels. Then you need an annihilation core, which we'll cover these in a minute as well, because they are very useful. And a formation core. So they're like the yin and the yang. So we've got something that destroys and brings into the system and something that like creates and pushes out of the system. If you know what I mean? So the annihilation core, actually requires nether quartz dust and also some fluix dust. So to get the fluix dust, you can always put a fluix crystal in the inscriber. The formation core is the same thing, except you just put certus quartz instead of nether quartz. So if you combine that all together with the uh, illuminated panel, formation core, annihilation core, logic processor. So we just made one of those. That's the gold one you get yourself the ME terminal. Now, to get the ME crafting terminal, you are gonna need a calculation processor and a crafting table, obviously. So that just merges the crafting table into the terminal that we've got right here, makes you have a ME crafting terminal. So I would highly recommend getting yourself a crafting terminal over a terminal if you're gonna use it for your main like crafting area. Now, next up, we've got the ME drive. So the drive itself is actually quite expensive. You need two diamonds for this. To make this system right here, you actually need three diamonds altogether because you need one for this to make the engineering processor here. You also need two here to make these two. Uh, you will also have need to make some of the fluids crystals already and some quartz fiber again just some glass and some certus quartz dust. And that creates you an ME drive. The ME drive is really useful. You can put the drives that I just talked about. So the storage part, just here like that. So you start off with the 1K, meaning that this can hold 1000 items. So you make the, uh, the 1K just with some certus quartz and a logic processor 
That's why I said the logic processors are kind of important to make. After that, all you need is a bit of iron, a bit of redstone, and some certs or the quartz glass that we just made earlier. And you can get yourself a 1k storage disk. So I'm going to grab one of those and we will stick that in like that. So this can hold uh, 1000, I think it is 1000. Oh, it says it right there 1024 bytes. And bytes are individual items. Issue we've got there is there's only 63 types, although it's zero indexed here, meaning that it starts at zero. So zero is the first thing. So we can actually have uh, 64 types in here, I think. I think that's how that works. So that's 64 types in here, meaning 64 individual items. So this pickaxe here is one item. This is another item. But for example, if we had, I don't know, uh, let's get that right there. So we've got five oak logs right there. That is technically one item, even though there's five things there. It's one type. I should say. So that's a type, that's a type, and this here is a type. Even if we do this, this is still one type, whereas we can't stack this this pickaxe with anything else, if you know what I mean. So in here right now, there is nothing being stored, and that is because I'm using, right at the back here, I'm also using infinite power for the ME controller. You do need to power the ME controller. It actually shows you in here what's taking power has an energy like usage and generation and things like that i am kind of assuming you guys have a power generation mod installed so it could be any mod but there is the vibration chamber vibration chamber there it is vibration chamber from uh ae2 so you can stick that down you can put coal in this and it will generate power for you so you can have the power going into this just exports power out of all sides. So the power here, if we put some coal in here, would go into the ME controller. So if you are playing with just applied energistics, then the ME controller would need to be powered by this vibration chamber. I'm sure there's other ways of powering it. I just, uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. So at the back here, I've got a ME storage bus. Now this thing is amazing. So what you do is you take yourself an interface, an ME interface right here, which is using one of those formation cores and an annihilation core. If you put it with a piston and a sticky piston, you can make yourself an ME storage bus. Now the cables are kind of cool in this, so you can put like loads of stuff on the same cable. So we could do like something like that. Uh, I can't get these off now without breaking the entire cable. That's fine, let's do it. Stick another cable down. You can also reach underneath and do something like that. So what this does, the uh, ME storage bus, is it acts like this right here is part of the storage that it's got. In fact, we don't even need the ME drive up here. You could just use a storage bus. In fact, sometimes it's easier to use a storage bus but if uh, the drives are more expensive than making some cheap storage that you want to like connect to especially if that storage has like one block that you can connect to to connect to like multiple storage things so a good example of that is the functional storage mod has a storage controller you can connect to that and it will connect to all of the drawers that you've got attached in this situation i've just put a chest down and you might notice that everything went into the chest and not into my drives. This is kind of important as well, especially if you've got like a ridiculous amount of storage in your drawers that you want to like keep everything in your drawers. Up here, there's a priority setting. So if I click on that, it was set to a thousand. Uh, obviously when I broke it, it got reset, but let's set it back to a thousand. And now if we click on, you can click on the terminal from behind, but I'll go around the front just for you guys. If I were to stick this in, by the way, this is JEI synchronized. So uh, if I get rid of that, you can see that there is items in here. It just looks like there isn't. I could type processor and it will only show my processors or planks and it will only show my planks, for example. Even if I were to stick these oak logs in, 
can't see them because it's not part of what I've typed into JEI down there. So you might be wondering why these all went into at the back there. That's purely because of the priority system. The ME drive actually also has a priority system. So we could set this one to 1001. So that is now set. If I were to put this ME controller in like that, and we go and have a look at this around the back here, you can see the ME controller is not in there. And that is because it went into this drive up here, this, this storage cell. So I'm going to take the storage cell or the uh, ME controller back out and I'm actually going to set that back to zero. You want this to be the last thing that items decide to go to, if you know what I mean. So that is purely because of this type limit that we've got in here. There's a really cool thing you can do, which I only recently found out about, and that's called partitioning. So the way that you partition something is you put a cell, so let's grab just one of these cells right here, put a cell in like that, and you can tell it that it can only store this ME controller, for example. So this thing here is now partitioned. So the only thing that this cell can store is the ME controller. So if I were to put this in here, and I were to get rid of that, there we go. If I were to stick in, I don't know, the ME controller, actually it would not go in there right now because it will still try and go over here, purely because this one's still set to a higher priority. But if, for example, you had thousands or you had, what is it, 262,144 of an item, you could get it all to go into the single storage cell that you've got by partitioning it to being like, this one here is the cell that has this thing in it. Really useful, I must admit. Um, I'm sure there's really good ways of uh, using that, but uh, I don't tend to do that. I tend to just leave it unpartitioned and then just random stuff goes in, in there. This I usually use as like my overflow, and then I have some sort of storage system connected at the back. Now, the next thing that I'm going to go over is importing and exporting items. So right over here, I've got an import bus. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this ME controller in like that. And you'll see it just disappeared. And that's because the import. So remember it this way around. You import into your system. So it's imported into the system and there's the ME controller. If I take that out again, I'll just show you it one more time. There it is. So this is like piping into the system. Export on the other hand, it doesn't have anything in the like little buffer that we've got right here. So it's not gonna export anything. If I were to put in the ME controller right there, let's say that I put this in here. So this is gonna import into the system. And if we look in there, it's not there. And that's because this has exported into the chest right here. So just with these two right here, you can already see some powerful things you can do. For example, if you wanted to set up a automated, ooh, let's have a think, an automated furnace. Let's try that. Okay, so I removed all of that and uh, I've got myself a furnace right here. So if on the back of this, we use an export bus, we can export, oh, we also need a cable hooking this up. There we go. All of the machines from Applied Energistics do connect with each other. Some of them have specific sides. So like this one here won't connect because it's got a little dot on the top and that signifies that that's where it connects. But most of them, I should say, do connect up like this. So what we can do is we have an exporter on the back. If you didn't know how furnaces work, then basically you can input items from the top, you can input fuel from the back, and you can pull items out of the bottom. So I'm gonna go down here and put an import bus, and we are gonna put cable like that. Let's just cover that up, cover that one up as well. Now, what we can do is set at the back here, planks. I'm going to put oak planks like that. 
and you'll see this starts filling up with oak planks in the sort of fuel slot of the furnace. Now I'm going to get some iron, raw iron like that. I'm also going to get a bunch of planks. I'm just going to grab those. We'll stick these in the system. So if I get rid of that now, you'll see that the planks have slowly started going down. There is acceleration upgrades you can make, so this makes everything a lot faster. But what we're going to do is we're going to put 63 iron right there, and we can set a filter up here in the export bus, just like that. And you should see the furnace turn on. So this is automated smelting. So what this is doing is exporting the iron into the top of the furnace. It's exporting the planks, or you could put coal or whatever you fancy that uh, does actually go in this slot. I think if you put anything else, like if I put those processors, for example, it won't actually put the items in here because it can't, because furnaces can't put that regular stuff in there. Like I can't put this grass block in there, for example. And then eventually what will happen is you'll see there's nothing being actually generated here. There it is, and then it goes away, and that's because it's being imported into the system. So that is exporters, importers, and storage buses. All of these, I think, have ME on the beginning. Yeah, so stick ME on all the beginnings of those, and you'll match that in JEI. Super useful. Another thing is the annihilation plane, so the ME annihilation plane, and the ME formation plane so i haven't actually got a formation plane formation plane so again these are yin and yang of each other so i can put this one here for example is it's kind of like a um block placer so if we were to put like grass block this unfortunately this one doesn't have uh, let's get rid of that and put that back down there but what we can do is we can place it right here for example uh i can put this as the block that I want this to form and then if I were to actually before I do that I forgot I need to set the priority on this to be like higher than over here but if I wanted to put this grass block in you'll see it places it which is perfect so we can do that again and it'll place it down for you which is super useful you can use the formation plane like this to uh, place the either the damaged, the chipped, or the flawed version of the Surtz Quartz block. Um, I will come on to this. Actually, let's do that now. Uh, what you can do is, let's get a damaged Surtz Quartz. So if I stick that there, I have got these growth accelerators. So let's have a look at that. Growth accelerator is a Fluix block. So that is just four of these. Some quartz glass, some ME Fluix cables as well. And you get yourself some growth accelerators. So I put four around this, and this is again being powered by a creative power cell right here with an energy acceptor. So this is, this over here, the ME controller can take in power, but you can also use an energy acceptor. And that can also take in power and power all of your cables. So in this case, I'm powering all of these cables and the growth accelerators are taking that power and they are growing. Right now it's just changed to a Surtz Quartz, but they were growing a, uh... ah, there we go, a damaged Surtz Quartz block. Again, we got kind of unlucky there that it only gave us one Surtz Quartz. But you can see this is a way quicker than what we saw at the Meteor site. Those weren't even growing, basically. So what you can have is an annihilation plane on this block. So we can get rid of one of these. And you can have the annihilation plane break only certain Quartz blocks. So this is a weird setup because this one here has not got a controller. Oh yeah, this has made it there. Brilliant. So this one doesn't have a controller. This one is only using the annihilation plane and the storage bus. And obviously we've got all of these crystal growth accelerators. Uh, but because the annihilation plane can only store 
Certus Quartz crystals up here. It won't break this because that is not Certus Quartz. Now, when it gets to the, the fully, so that one there, the Certus Quartz cluster that we've got right there, if you break that, you will get, if you weren't in creative, you would get some Certus Quartz crystals. So it waits basically until you get to that point. I would like to point out there's a few mods that make it a lot easier to do this rather than setting up like a little subsystem. Um, for example, Modular Rooters has a breaker module that can also do that detection to see what it's going to be mining. So you can tell it to only mine Certus Quartz, for example. I think it's easier to set up, in my opinion, but you know, each to their own. What I am going to do is I'm going to place a flawless crystal in here. So flawless will never break down. It will always stay flawless unless you break it, right? Unless you go and actually actively mine it. So what this will do is it will constantly just go ping, ping, ping and mine up a bunch of Certus Quartz for you forever. So you could just, uh, if you can build one of these around uh, one of the flawless that you have out in the world, or if you use a spatial or spatial IO to move a flawless to somewhere closer to your base, then I would highly recommend you do that. So there's two different wrenches that you can get from Applied Energistics. The first one is the Nether Quartz wrench. This is the one I always suggest people actually go for because I think Nether Quartz is probably easier to get than Certus Quartz. Unless you haven't needed a, a wrench this entire time and you've got a massive backlog of uh, Certus Quartz and you don't have any Nether Quartz available, I would al always say uh, go for the Nether Quartz one. What this one allows you to do, is, as you've been seeing, I've been breaking these and it broke everything on the cable. You can actually just remove, obviously I'm in creative right now so it deletes it, but you can remove anything that is on one of the cables with this. So you don't have to break the whole cable, get rid of all of the things that have been attached. That is the basics. That is the basics. Obviously, this looks a bit more complicated right now because I have another video coming out after this video, which will explain how auto crafting works in Applied Energistics. This will be part one. Part two will be all about auto crafting. And uh, you can expect that video in the next couple of days. Uh, I would like to just say if you have any questions, then uh, I do have a Discord. It's linked in the description. And everyone on my Discord is amazing. And I've got loads of people that love Applied Energistics and use it all the time. So if there's a question that I can't answer, then I know someone on the Discord would be able to answer it. So hop over to the Discord. I'm sure that they can help you out. Um, I also have a Patreon server. So my Patreon actually a project now it's a patreon server project i've got a patreon which is basically uh any money that comes in from the patreon i try to spend on hosting servers for everyone so the server itself is covered by the patreon so if you are interested in joining a server with us we are just about to set up an all the mods 9 server so if you are interested then again that is going to be linked in the description and uh yeah, I think that's all that we've got time for for today. So uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for joining. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.